भविष्य इन हिंदी सबको बड़े सम्मान के साथ फैम से हृदय स्वागत With great respect and love, I welcome you all with all my heart. And he said, the essence of spirituality is to welcome another person with love. Everything else is just window dressing. Last year, my message was, Maestro, what the heck was it? <laughs> Very esoteric, isn't it? Become clear in first force. That's fairly esoteric. By that I meant, in more uh, kind of street language, know what you want. Be clear in knowing what you want. Sometimes we hide what we want from ourselves because we feel guilty about it or because we feel hopeless about it. Um, neither of these is good. It's important to know what you want. And why is it important to know it? Because it's the essence of our spiritual practice, our sadhana, uh, to become clear in our inner space. We have to know what's going on inside, to know what's happening inside of ourselves. You know, it's certainly not that good to lie to others and deceive them, but it's much worse to lie to yourself and to deceive yourself, and yet so many people do that. When you do that, you become all twisted uh, and you become seriously persona-ridden. You put on a false face to meet people. <clears throat> In short, you become a phony, so don't do that. Instead, become clear in first force. And this is a phrase by Morris Nichol, who was a disciple of Gurdjieff, a great spiritual teacher. He said, become clear in first force. Know what you want. And a good meditation is to say, what do I really want? Now, the desire of desires is to know God. That's the desire that hides behind all the other desires. And from a, a Shaivite perspective, they're all resolvable, that it's all the desire to know God. Everything we want is a desire to know God. So this year's message develops this point. We need to become single-minded and simple in order to uplift ourselves and empower ourselves. I like that word, empower. It was a vogue word in the 90s. But we must empower ourselves. When we go after things that we can't attain, we become disempowered, we become pathetic. When we go after things that are bad for us, we become pathetic also. We disempower ourselves. <clears throat> so this year I propose a method for that. So the, met method, the message this year is in code <clears throat> is this. Speak to God in the Chittakash. <laughs> you knew it, didn't you? <clears throat> recently, I learned a new thing. Well, it wasn't that recently. It was a new thing. It's called gluten intolerance. <laughs> it appears that this substance, gluten, is extremely dangerous. And more and more people seem to be allergic to it. God is similar. God is an allergy that many people have. It must be the G that they both begin with. <clears throat> Therefore, the gluten-free form of my message is speak to the higher self. Speak to the higher self within yourself. <clears throat> so speak to God in Chittakash. Those of you who know uh, Bhagavan Nityananda, famous compendium of his sayings called the Chittakash Gita. Chittakash means the space of consciousness. So it both means universal consciousness and also the akasha, the Chittakash in your own brain, your own inner space. You know, if you look inside, you discover inside your own brain, inside your own heart, an endless flow of thoughts and feelings going on and on. And they're all playing in that chitakash. There's a space. If we can know how to work with that and to uplift that, our whole life is transformed. When that inner space becomes miserable and contracted and dry and empty, we're miserable. When we learn how to uplift that space, we become very, very happy and very fulfilled. <clears throat> so let me backtrack a bit. Abhinavagupta says, quote from a great Shaivite sage. He says, this universe 
is established always and is in every way involved in the third person, the second person, and the first person, both in the dealings of worms and the all-knowing. This all-inclusive order of experience consists of the third, second, and first person has been manifested by the free will of the highest Lord. So these principles are universal, the structure of the universe. First person, me. Second person, you. And third person, everybody else that we're talking about. You know, so <clears throat> this is a basic structure. It's grammatical, and it's part of the, the very fabric of who we are. We love the first person, that is ourselves. We're terribly in love with ourselves. We're narcissistic. Uh, but we also love the second person, the other. A relationship is first person relating to the second person. Martin Buba, a famous philosopher, uh, called it the I-thou relationship, I-thou. He said third person is the I-it relationship. It's an object. <clears throat> the it can be named and defined and can be approached coldly and held at a distance through the intellect. You know, science approaches things as its. They don't say, oh, my little molecule, I love you. They say, it is like this, it is like that, and they talk about it like that. But I, thou, is a heart relationship. The thou must be approached directly through the heart. And Buber said that God should be approached as a thou, not a he. This is a brilliant insight. He said, don't approach God as a he, which we always do, you know, he, he's this, he's that, but approach it as a thou means in, communicate with God as the other. <clears throat> he said, God is the thou of thous. The thou of thous. He's the thou behind all the other thous. We're always looking for the other. We're actually looking for God. We search for the perfect relationship. We're actually looking for the divine. It involves having a conversation with the divine. And the most marvelous teaching that I've ever seen on this kind of communication is from a 19th century Hasidic master uh, named Reb Nachman of Breslau. And he called his method Hit Bodedut. That won't be on your final exam. <laughs> Hit Bodedut. In our terms, it means having a Shiva process conversation <clears throat> with Shiva. Uh, what happens in the Shiva process, those of you who know this method of inquiry that we use, you make an A statement. You say how you feel, candidly. I'm upset. I'm happy. I'm angry. Whatever's accurate, that's what you do. Then you follow the upward shift. You follow, you be, pay a lot of attention to inner feeling. You notice when the feeling expands and when it contracts. You're not inventing anything. You're merely scientifically watching what's happening inside you. <clears throat> you see which of your inner statements has energy and which of it contracts you and depletes you. And with the understanding that the truth will have energy and upliftment and is uplifting while the false is dry and empty. The goal is to be in a second person relationship with the higher power. You can call it God or the self. You speak to the other, to this higher power intimately, as to the beloved. You're as honest as you can be and use the inner play of expanded and contracted feeling to monitor your, your authenticity. So there's a form of meditation, a form of Shiva process I'm suggesting we do. So the first thing in your inner world, imagine that you are you and the other is the form in which you worship God or just consciousness itself or your higher self, and you're sitting there with them, and have a conversation, and then talk about your life to this higher self as you would to your best friend, what you're going through, your pressures, your pains, talk about your career, your relationship, your body and health, your spiritual life, and be candid about your feelings. Make an A statement. That means just say, oh, I'm upset about that. 
I'm happy about that. I feel proud about that. I feel anxious about that. Do that. And you can even express your doubts and fears. Don't be inhibited. Don't put on a false front, because you're talking now to the higher power. Ask for help. It's important not to be too spiritual in those quotes or too proud. Be real. Ask for everything you want, even if it's embarrassing. Ask for everything you want, like a little child. <clears throat> you, uh, Nachman said you can complain and weep, be pushy, argue with him. God, what are you doing? <laughs> huh? Didn't you hear me? How many times do I have to say? <clears throat> and if you've been asking for something for a long time and are not getting it, and if you've been screaming and yelling and feeling sorry for yourself, you can also ask that higher power why that's so, and then you should listen. You should listen because that higher power will speak within you if you listen, if you listen in an open way. And you should also praise it and thank him. And even if you don't know what to say to him, um, and you can't speak, just sitting in that attitude is very good. Just sitting as though you're sitting in front of. My greatest practice when I was with Baba was simply sitting in front of him. I felt just sitting in front of him, everything could happen. Everything would happen. So put yourself in front of that higher power. and Everything can happen. This is what I want you to do. I want you to practice hit Bodhidut in a modified version in 2013. Talk inside yourself. Make that a living relationship. 